Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 34 of the Ortho Eval Pal podcast. I'm your host, Paul Marquis. Excited to be here again today talking about something that is really passionate to me. And as you saw in the title, um, we're going to be talking about the Hoffman sign, the Babinski test, hyperreflexia, and clonus. And what does that have to do with orthopedics? Well, first thing I'm going to say is that about four years ago, the first video that I posted uh, was uh, a young lady who had a head injury and had a positive Hoffman sign. And I put that video up. And to this day, it is the video that attracts more traction than anybody else out there. Um, if you put in the Hoffman sign, uh, it will pop up usually to my video. It's like a 12 second or 13 second uh, video. I don't even talk in it. And um, it really shows a nice sign of what a Hoffman's test is. As I started looking into it a little bit more, I started to find that it is very, very important to understand these tests. Now, there are other neurologic tests out there, and, and I'll be the first to tell you I am not a neurologist, but I have seen many, many patients who have had some of these tests, and some of them can be uh, false positives, but there are a, a handful of folks out there that uh, we discovered issues like MS or severe cervical spine uh, stenoses, where they were losing quality of life, losing function, uh, losing uh, the ability to use their arms and legs, and um, catching these things quickly enough, communicating expeditiously with a neurosurgeon um, was uh, very helpful, and uh, contacting the right folks to uh, help sort this all out. You know, like I said, I'm a, I'm a physical therapist. I have 26 years of experience, but I am not a neurologist, not a neurosurgeon, and um, but I think that recognizing these issues in the clinic um, are very important when you're taking a look at your orthopedic patients. And the reason I'm doing this one today is because uh, yesterday we took a look at a gentleman who had some really interesting findings uh, and uh, we uh, weren't able to put our hands on the uh, diagnosis. Uh, it doesn't look like what he was referred for. And uh, we actually are posting this video here uh, in on YouTube. And uh, what you'll find is that when you watch these videos on YouTube, uh, on my channel, Ortho Eval Pal with uh, Paul Markey, and uh, you go to the Hoffman Sign and Neurologic Test uh, playlist, I've had a number of patients who were uh, basically uh, identified with certain problems right from our clinic, and uh, we helped to uh, move them along to specialists that were able to uh, help them um, prevent these problems from getting worse and even uh, sometimes take care of these problems surgically. So um, let's talk about uh, some of these. And again, I'm not a neurologist, but I do know how to do these tests. Uh, I do know that they ra raise red flags, and uh, we'll talk about uh, that uh, as we go along. <clears throat> and uh, the other thing I want to do is talk a little bit about why it's important uh, to identify them, how to perform tests, and you know what do you do with these afterwards. So um, let's start with the Hoffman's test, okay? So uh, I really like the Hoffman's test. Uh, you can, what I'll do is give a little description on how you perform the test. Obviously, you can't see it, but I'll tell you, I'll give you a link in um, our show notes and uh, you can go right to that. You'll see some great uh, Hoffman's uh, signs and uh, Hoffman tests and you'll see uh, what they look like uh, because you can do it in class. So you're blue in the face and you may not have anybody in your class who has a positive test, but it's always great to see the real deal so that you can carry that over into your office. Now, it's interesting because I talked to a lot of providers um, from physical therapists to athletic trainers to, um, to PAs, FNPs, and physicians who have really never even heard of the Hoffman's test before. So uh, I think it's a very important test. And once you start doing it, you really want to do it on uh, most all of your folks who have um, cervical spine dysfunction, shoulder dysfunction. I throw it in there. It takes two seconds to do. Um, so it's uh, real quick and easy. But when you find it, it's pretty significant. So what you do with the patient is you make sure that they are sitting in a really relaxed position. Their arm uh, should be rested on a table or on their leg. And you take a hold of their uh, the middle finger. You take a hold of that uh, distal interphalangeal joint and you basically stabilize it. And with your other hand, what you do is you flick the nail and listen to this. And that's pretty much what it's like, okay? You flick that nail really quickly. What you do is you observe the thumb and the forefinger. Now, if that thumb and forefinger flex together toward each other, that's a positive Hoffman sign. 
You should do it on the other side also. Now, some people are just strung out tight neurologically and will have a positive Hoffman sign um, in a po or a positive test that looks like that, um, but it may not mean anything at all. But you need to be thinking some sort of either a cervical spine stenosis. They could have MS. They could have a brain lesion. They could have had a, a prior injury like a, like a head injury um, that could cause that. But if you see somebody with that, the next thing you should do is check their reflexes. And I actually do it in the reverse order. I always check reflexes first as part of my standard cervical spine evaluation. And we're going to keep this kind of toward the C-spine for now, only because we're doing a C-spine segment here um, for the next several episodes. And so um, what I do is when I when I check the cervical spine, uh, I do the reflexes. I do C5, C6, and C7, C5, biceps, C6, brachioradialis, and C7, the triceps. And if those are hyper-reflexive and quite brisk, um, you want to check both sides. And that is also a sign that there could be something going on neurologically. From there, I go down to the knees. Even if somebody comes in with a shoulder problem, cervical spine problem, or upper quadrant issue, I still go down to the knees and Achilles and I test the L4 reflex at the knees and the S1 reflex at the Achilles. If they are hyper reflexive there also, I then do the Hoffman sign. Okay, so hyperreflexia, and you can see some of these videos on my YouTube channel, uh, and you can see what a real brisk reflex is like. Sometimes they won't even uh, present like they're normal. Uh, like when you do a tricep reflex, you usually um, should obtain some elbow extension. Some people will have um, twitching of the hand or flexion of the fingers or flexion of the wrist. Uh, when you do that, um, do it on both sides to make sure it's symmetrical and they have kind of the same reaction. But when you you have that type of hyperreflexia, um, you need to kind of keep an eye on it. Even take a look at one of my videos. I, I, I think I have one where I'm doing uh, reflex testing on the elbow and the leg starts to go into clonus. Um, so pretty severe condition there. So from there, uh, what I do is uh, if both of those are, if you, they have a positive Hoffman's and they have um, uh, hyperreflexia, then I have them take their shoes off and I do a Babinski test, okay, even if it's an upper quadrant issue. Um, so I will do a Babinski test and basically the Hoffman sign is uh, the Babinski of the upper extremity. More people are familiar with Babinski. You take your, your reflex hammer, the back end of your reflex hammer, and you stroke the lateral side of the foot starting near the proximal fifth metatarsal. You go along the lateral column and you bring that across the uh, forefoot toward the big toe. You look at the toes and see how they react. A positive test is when the great toe extends and the toes splay. Okay, so a positive Babinski sign is when the great toe extends and the toes splay. Now, don't mistake this for a person being ticklish and just hyper reactive. Okay. What I find that helps to distinguish if it's positive or not is that when I'm done stroking the bottom of the foot, the big toe may be a little bit delayed and it just kind of comes up really slow and then drops back down after you finish the stroke. Okay. Do it on the other side. So if you have a positive Hoffman sign, positive Babinski, hyperreflexia, I then go to, to check if they have any clonus. So while they're sitting on the edge of the table with their legs suspended, I put my hand on their knee and I quickly dorsiflex the foot and I hold it up there. Now, most people will bounce two or three times. That's normal. Okay. That's a normal stretch reflex. When you stimulate the muscle spindle fibers in the uh, calf muscle that quickly, it reacts and says, okay, you're going to tear something. You might as well contract. And then it kind of bounces a few times, but that's normal. Okay. But if you dorsiflex the foot and it continues to bounce uh, several times and just goes and goes and goes, and sometimes the other leg will start going um, or the, the whole leg will start bouncing. That's a, that's positive uh, clonus. And um, with all of those signs, you need to be thinking in your head, there is something uh, of an upper motor neuron lesion going on here. Um, we've seen people who have just a positive Babinski and positive clonus and um, have a transverse myelitis at the thoracic spine, but nothing. Uh, they have a negative Hoffman sign and they're not hyperreflexive um, at the upper extremities. So that helps to distinguish where your lesion is in your in your. Um, spinal cord. So if this happens, you, you have a patient who comes in with this, like I said, they could just be, you know, strung out uh, tight and neurologically. And some people are, they're just kind of uh, type A personalities. They're, they're always busy. They're always doing stuff. They don't sleep well because they have restless leg syndrome and all that stuff. Um, they're just that type of person. But 
more often than not, there is something underlying going on here. And so what I do is um, I connect back with the provider who sent the patient to me. And I say, you know, we, we've got these signs and symptoms of some sort of an upper motor neuron lesion. I'm kind of concerned. I also ask the patient and we'll find this to be positive. Also, I ask the patient if they're having any balance issues. And oftentimes they'll say, yeah, you know, I've been tripping a lot more. I just feel unsteady on my feet. Maybe they'll be walking with a little bit wider base of support just to give themselves better stability. And sometimes they'll even walk with a more like stiff legged type posture. Um, you will see this. Uh, some people may have a little loss of appetite, need to be concerned with that or sudden weight loss, uh, then we are thinking, you know, in the in the realm of uh, some sort of a cancerous lesion of some sort. Um, and so, you know, you need to keep an eye on all of these other things. And oftentimes they just come in for shoulder pain. Um, and it turns out to be, you know, something much larger. And uh, so then I, I connect with the primary care provider who sent them to me. Um, sometimes we'll connect with a, a physiatrist who does a lot of work in the, the realm of musculoskeletal issues and neurologic uh, issues. Issues. I maybe connect with a neurosurgeon that uh, you may know. Uh, and if you feel like this is something that has been really coming along quickly and the patient's had some, some serious loss of quality of life as a result, you may want to try to expedite a visit with a neurologist and or um, neurosurgeon or physiatrist just to uh, try to uh, help these patients um, you know, get a better answer to what is causing uh, this problem. So, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me on my page. I uh, want to thank all the folks out there who have been uh, sending awesome comments and a great positive feedback about the show. Um, really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, as, as I look at uh, where the feedback is coming from, it's worldwide, uh, which is awesome. Uh, I, I love to have this audience, especially uh, from this little town in northern Maine, uh, which, uh, you know, I never had much reach from before, but uh, this is working out really well. So um, I hope you're enjoying the content. Please get in touch with me at orthoevalpal.com and uh, check out the YouTube channels. We will have uh, some uh, links in our show notes to demonstrate Hoffman signs, Babinski, re hyperreflexia, and clonus issues. And um, you'll find these to be quite impressive. And hopefully you can make a difference in your patient's life by identifying a problem early and uh, hopefully optimizing their quality of life. So again, thank you so much for listening. And uh, till the next episode, take care.